hello again, people. I just got back from a holiday with some friends and family to um, the north of Portugal, Porto and Douro Valley and Braga, Guimarães, all really lovely places. I wish I could live in multiple places at the same time in Portugal because <laughs> there are a lot of nice places. And when I see a new place, I always think it's, it's better than my place. But then when I get back home again, I realize I'm in the right place. <laughs> so I like the Silver Coast. It's a good region of Portugal for many reasons. Anyway, um, back into my reading and so on. And I came across a book recently called uh, Debunking Howard Zinn. And it's in that, the vein of conservatives trying to take back all the glory and the beauty of Western civilization. We apologize for it, but you know, it's all about perspective. Howard Zinn had a point of view coming from a certain context, a certain place and time, and was critiquing Western civilization a bit, and the United States in particular. The book's name is The Alternative History of the United States, or An Alternative History, which says it all. It's an alternative history, a different point of view of the normal standard narrative of Western civilization, the United States, capitalism, etc. And then you have uh, Gabber coming around um, saying that uh, Indeed, Western civilization is good, Columbus was good, everybody was good. <laughs> Abe Lincoln was a good capitalist, even though Karl Marx and, and Friedrich Engels hadn't invented the term capitalism when Abe was growing up and becoming president of the United States and, you know, the helm of the North during the Civil War. So everybody can have a, a perspective and defend, you know, good things about a culture or a particular historical point of view or critique uh, things about uh, history and culture from a particular perspective. And I find it all interesting. Her arguments are, are very good ones, and like Steven Pinker, The Better Angels of Our Nature, etc. Other books, you know, of course, Western civilization is, is amazing, but you know, it, it didn't just invent itself. It's, it's not a thing. It's, uh, it's the way we look back on, on history and we come up with terms, and if one wants to be fast and loose with terms, then uh, let's say Nancy Pelosi, a senator from the United States, is a raging communist, evil, lunatic, <laughs> you know. And Western civilization is the best thing since sliced bread. And then we can define what we mean by Western civilization. How far back do we want to go? Uh, a lot of Western civilization nuts go back to Plato or whoever, the Bible, and they get all their, you know, their deep perspectives from those ancient texts and bring them forward. But, you know, it's an emerging thing. And the history of the West, however you want to define that, is broad and deep and complex. Uh, so, whatever. You want to apologize for the West and everything that it represents? Go right ahead, because the West is great. But all of this uh, implies that, to me anyway, that we can't imagine something better. We can't see a way forward that might be radically different from the past. And we struggle 
uh, vigorously to maintain our idea about our civilization, our culture, our, our identity, whatever. And, you know, it becomes this big fight between sides, you know, those that critique the West or the United States, like Chris Hedges and those that defend it, like the author of uh, Debunking Howard Zinn. And I can see all sides of the argument, but I can also see that given our circumstances today, there may be other ways of organizing and running society and different kinds of economic systems and cultures moving forward that might be uh, heads and tails better than Western civilization or Eastern or whatever, you know? Is communism part of Western civilization because, you know, it, it emerged in the West? Are we going to call it Russian and therefore other than the West, even though Russia for a long time has been seen as a part of Europe? I don't know. Depends on how far you go back and what lenses you want to put on, what kind of fine grain exploration you want to have, what your ideological preferences are, philosophical preferences, and so on. For most of us, we don't know anything about it anyway. So all the hoity-toity people at, at liberties or journals and quarterlies and so on from Harvard University and whatnot, who like to write intellectual stuff that nobody reads. I mean, most of us just don't know, don't care. We just think, you know, I grew up in uh, pick, a, pick a place, Oregon, uh, on a ranch or a farm or in the city, and I believe these things. We don't question where our beliefs come from, why we have our perspectives. Some people do. I think what she was writing in, in her critique of Howard Zinn is very honest, reasonable, and I find it really interesting, but I also find Howard Zinn, his perspective on things interesting, and I think they're valid. You know, if people want to, you know, talk about the bad things that happened to the losers <laughs> or the people who were colonized or whatever. I think it's fair play to do that. I also don't think that Columbus was just a raging evil maniac that wanted to destroy indigenous people. When I was in Braga and Douro and, you know, you look at the, the Roman remnants of, I mean, Roman remnants, you know, uh, Roman things that were, that are still here in, in Portugal. The Romans were here before Portugal was Portugal. And you think about the Celtic history and the Moors and all these different perspectives over, over time, you know. I can't imagine how those people felt about Catholicism, what it meant to them. Our guide, uh, Pascal, was talking about discipline and how it, it's important to take the religion seriously. When you look at the art, the reason they're not smiling or they look horrified or something was, you know, the Catholic Church wanted the people to take it seriously and to find discipline in it because they needed discipline to survive. And that's a fantastic argument. You know, the Catholic Church emerged. You have power structures throughout history. That was one of the major ones in history. It had a purpose. Yeah, there were, there were the bosses and the kings and the princes and the priests and the bishops and the popes. And then there were the normal people who were illiterate and didn't understand any of it, but just looked in awe at the statues and thought about the Virgin Mary in various ways and thought about the sacrifice of Christ in various ways. And it was meaningful. It, it was a direction for their life. I wouldn't go so far as Jordan Peterson, you know, where you have to get all worried about it disappearing or something, because I, I truly believe that there are other forms of discipline, quote unquote, that we can adopt that have nothing to do with religion. It can be science, critical thinking, sense-making, 
and other things. These disciplines can help us make sense of the world and, and make meaning in the world. And these are things we can identify with as powerfully as we can with a mythical God or an image of the Virgin Mary or Christ on the cross. And if we imagine, we can come up with these things without too much difficulty. So I don't think it's an either or proposition, you know, either we get back the church and the meaning that comes with that, or we, we lose our discipline and our meaning and our community. There are a lot of things that affect the world and community and how families operate. A lot of them are influenced by socioeconomics and psychology and, and uh, social media, but it's complicated. There are a lot of things exerting force over our culture today, just like there was long ago. Things are much more complex now than they used to be, but still, we're in that world, we're in our world, and we have to make sense of it. I'm in awe, and I love trying to put myself in the shoes to empathize with people a thousand years ago or 500 years ago and what the church here in Portugal meant to the people and how it helped them survive, as Pascal Silva said, because they needed something like that just to survive. Could they have survived without the Catholic Church? Sure, there would have been something else in its place. Something else might have emerged. You can imagine, for example, that the Roman Empire never ended. So what would Portugal be like if in 2021 the Roman Empire was still intact somehow? You know, we can imagine these things. It won't hurt to have a different perspective on the world than the ones we've inherited or adopted. And we don't have to call Howard Zinn a propagandist just like I don't have to call Steven Pinker a propagandist or other writers um, because they have a point of view that they're defending or that they're putting forth vigorously and that they think is important. If you honestly think your perspective is important, you put it forth in a, in a good faith way, I think it's great. We should listen to all of that and learn from it. But I'm still stuck on this idea that if we don't imagine a new way forward, we're not going to make it forward because there are so many things that are kind of out of our control right now. <laughs> and how do we get control of them as, as people, as citizens? Mega corporations have much more power to decide our future than we do, but that doesn't mean we have to be powerless. So can we imagine something better than this particular type of capitalism? Does the word have to even go forward into the future? Does it really matter? <laughs> Which capitalism? Uh, eight, 19th century Karl Marx and Engels? Capitalism or something else? Some newer definition of it. I, for example, don't think a business person is necessarily capitalist, and there are rent seekers in all kinds of systems, not just capitalism. Social democracy and so on and so forth, what's good? I don't know, but maybe we can think of something. Maybe it's time we did, because I, d I think time's running out, quite frankly, in terms of our current paradigm. So defending Western civilization academically, I think it's great. Is it perfect? Hell no, it's not and no other civilization was. So what do you want to pick? Ancient Hawaiian civilization, or Maori civilization, or Mayan civilization, or Roman civilization, or ancient Babylon, or ancient Iranian, Persian. Go ahead, take your pick and defend it. There are good and bad elements to all of it, I guess. I hate to sound Trumpian, but there probably are. Millions and millions of people have lived under all kinds of different systems and found a way to survive. Hence, we're here now, today, billions of us. And we all don't hold the same point of view. So there are multiple perspectives through which we can see the world and interpret the world, and history for that matter. Who's absolutely right? 
no one. So I would say crack the book, read uh, Debunking Howard Zinn, and also read um, Alternative History, if that's the title, Howard Zinn's popular book. Try to understand bo both points of view and perspectives and think, you know, well, what do you think? Uh, is it somebody's definition of Western civilization that's going to see us through this century of global warming and insane buildup of high-tech AI weapons? We're still concerned today with wiping each other out like we were thousands of years ago. All these kingdoms in Portugal that fought and then coalesced into a country and fought other empires and other cultures for domination here in the Iberian Peninsula. What emerged? And then there, were, there was a period of dictatorship and now there's a period of social democracy. What's best? I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's all in the past now. Sal Salazar and, and uh, other people. It's, it's in the past. What are we going to do now? under these circumstances. Well, I know one thing for sure. Circumstances will dictate what happens to us. We're going to have to improvise and adapt whether we like it or not. It's only a question of how much agency, sovereignty, intention, creativity is left to us at the end of the day to affect our communities and our lives and our cultures. Somehow we've got to take some of that power back. I don't know how it's going to happen. But anyway, while we live, we can appreciate the world for what it is, which is why I love Catholic churches, and I love Roman ruins and artifacts, and I love human history, anthropology, psychology, the whole thing is interesting. But I also have a deep love and reverence for life on Earth and preserving our ecosystems for everything on Earth and not just being a death machine. Okay? We don't have to kill witches anymore. We don't have to have an inquisition. We don't have to lop off heads <laughs> like the Jacobin. Stalin doesn't have to murder all his enemies and starve people to death in gulags. And we don't need another Hitler in the form of a Donald Trump or a Donald Trump look-alike, <laughs> even though obviously Donald Trump isn't a Hitler. He's a clown, but whatever. People love that because they think that a clown is going to defend their civilization from the other people. Man, oh man, isn't that a dangerous way to be? when you're mounting machine guns on uh, robotic dogs and you have drones that can fly around and acquire a target from space and decide when to, to fire a missile without any human intervention. And you have sea level rise and you have climate change, fires and all that shit. And what the fuck people talking about asteroids hitting the planet and it's really being directed by an angel to wipe, to wipe out the world so that Jesus can make it all right again. We have to take responsibility for our thinking, our perspectives, our points of view and stand up and talk with one another so that we can imagine a way forward. Okay, that's all for now. Bouliam T, out.